What's going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, and meet my brand new camera, the Rico GR3 Diary Edition. Or as some folks in the Rico community like to call it, the Dairy Edition. <laughs> And this may be the first camera that is not a Sony that I bought in a very long time, if you don't count action cameras and drones. Since last year, I've fallen in love with these small everyday carry cameras, otherwise known as EDC. Well, I've actually been a fan of powerhouse cameras that's incredibly lightweight and compact while still producing exceptional image quality. After all, it's why I got into these mirrorless cameras. And I do plan on making a video in the future talking about all my favorite EDC cameras. But today, I want to share with you my first impressions on the Ricoh. So why the GR3? Last summer, I made the ultimate EDC camera comparison that included the Leica Q2, the Fujifilm X100V, and the Sony RX1R Mark II. It's a fun video, you should totally queue it up later to check it out. But one of the top comments I kept getting asked was, GR3? How about the GR3? You forgot the GR3! How can you not include the GR3? Wow, the simple answer is, I didn't know about it, so I did my research and what I found was I really like what this camera has to offer. Number one, it's lightweight and compact. My two favorite buzzwords. It is a pocketable point and shoot APS-C 24.2 megapixel sensor camera with a 28 millimeter full frame lens equivalent with an aperture of f2.8. Out of the three cameras talked about in the EDC video, this one right here truly is the smallest and lightest. Look at this lens right here. This is how much it sticks out. Ergo wise, it feels really good in my hands. I love the small little grip bump right here. And hidden inside of this little guy, in-body image stabilization, ND filters, and macro mode. So this camera, it's no slouch. Number two, film simulation. One of the things that I praise about the Fuji X100V in my other video was the film simulation. In my opinion, everyday carry camera should be a fun camera to that particular individual. And for me, this differs from my work cameras, the ones that I have to try hard with. With an EDC camera, I don't have to worry too much about editing or at least having to take the photos to Lightroom and do further adjustments. I just want something that gives me great results immediately. And I know the whole film camera phenomenon is still going strong right now and why I do love the old school film look, the Kodak, the Portra, the Elite Chrome, the Fuji. I don't enjoy the price of film row and the process of having to get them developed. Vivian does and I think this household here only has enough to support one crazy film shooter. Yay! So I knew I wanted a digital camera that can replicate the film look which both the X100V and this Ricoh here can offer. Now, of course, we do own the X100V, and I always joke that I would steal it from Vivian, but there was also something else about that camera that prevented me from yeeting it off her hands, and that is the focal length. So I enjoy both the Fuji and the Sony for using 35mm full-frame equivalent lenses, but in my previous video, I much prefer the wider 28mm of the Leica Q2. I, of course, do not prefer the price, though. And I know I said 28mm is not wide enough, but that's usually in the context of versatile zoom lenses. As a prime lens, it's awesome. And for those of you who are not in the know, there are actually two versions of the GR3. There's also the GR3X version with the 40 millimeter full frame equivalent, but that would be a tad too similar to the RX1 that I already own, and that's already a 35 millimeter F2. Anyway, with these three factors in mind, it pretty much sealed the deal for me to give the Ricoh GR3 a try. So after a week now, here are my first impressions. First off, if I had to add a fourth reason on why I pulled the trigger on this, the color scheme is definitely up there. I really love this muted brownish gray warm look. It makes it look very unique from all the other black cameras that I own. Kind of a dumb reason, I know, but the color just makes me so happy. It just makes me want to shoot more. Hey, whatever inspires you to go out and photograph more, right? My alternative choice would have been the Urban Edition because of that blue ring, but during my research, I came across the Diary Edition, which was being sold as a limited bundle. Unfortunately, the bundle was sold out here in Japan and I wasn't able to pick it up. It came with a much nicer hand strap, a customized hot shoe cover, and a special carrying case. Oh, I am still beating up myself for missing out on that limited edition bundle. But Rico, true to their words, said they would release just the camera by itself into the retail market in spring. And with the dollar being so strong and tourists can take advantage of the tax-free shopping, I was able to nab this sucker for 880 US dollars, saving roughly 150 that I would have to pay for back in the States. Good deal, am I right? Am I right? Good deal? Good deal? 
And because they caught the diary edition, every time you turn off the camera, it shows you how many photos that you took that day, along with the total numbers of photos that you've taken with the camera. Pretty neat. Number two, internal memory. So as we went to go pick this up, I was so excited to try out this camera that I completely forgot to bring an SD card. <sighs> I was bummed for literally a second until I remember from all the reviews that I've watched, this camera actually has a built-in two gigabyte of internal memory. Bless! Which, now that I think about it, all brands, including Sony, ought to do this. Built-in 32 gigabytes of memory in all of their cameras, at least. But yeah, two gigabyte here, not much, but at least it's something, and it gives us about 140 shots of large JPEG. So I guess if I really want to treat this like an actual film camera, I don't have to use an SD card. <laughs> Just kidding. Number three, autofocus. I love that it's very snappy. There's not much more for me to say. I love the how responsive the touchscreen is, so I can adjust the focus point really quickly. But I know most street folks who use this camera prefer the snap distance focus, so I definitely got to experiment with that some more. Number four, raw development. Similar to the Fuji X100V, I love the fact that if you shoot raw, you can change the film simulation in camera after you've taken the photo. So if I shot a photo with the negative film effect, but decided later that it would look better with the positive film effect, I can do that in camera along with other types of adjustments. And I feel this in camera editing process is so much faster than the X100V. And I know earlier I said I prefer not to edit my EDC photos. What I meant was really just avoiding that process of having to take out my SD card, plug it into my computer, copy into Lightroom, drag the sliders around to make adjustments. For me, doing minor correction in camera is fine. I have a lot of downtime riding the train, so whenever I review the photos, I can just mess with the photos then and there. No need for Wi-Fi transferring the RAWs. And once I get back to my computer, plug in the SD card, just pull the JPEGs and just delete the RAWs and never have to worry about it again. Number five, film simulation. Now the negative film effect was added to this camera specifically, but Ricoh subsequently made a free update to the other GR cameras to get this effect as well. And I'm really liking the negative film. It's what I shot with on day one and I was very impressed with the results. The community also praises the positive film effect in the GR series and I do too. But of course it's the ability to input different film recipes that I decide to pick this camera up for. And you can input up to six different recipes, but make three readily accessible on the dial up here. And these are the ones that I'm using so far. Royal Supra, Chrome Slide, and Portra 800. And I pulled some of these recipes from the Rico recipe app. The same guy behind the Fuji recipe app also made this app as well, which is really cool. And I'm also on the hunt for more recipes. So if you know any good resources, please DM me on Instagram or join the Vaughn community, join my Discord or Facebook group, link down below and let me know. Now, I don't expect to be pulling off too much bokeh with this camera compared to the other EDCs that I own. And this camera's purpose isn't really for that. It very much is a street style camera where composition and subject matter are far more important when creating an image to highlight something rather than using bokeh to blur everything out. So moving on to some minor cons. Now this camera, it warms up pretty quickly and I can feel it around the handle right here. It's not terribly hot, but it is noticeable. Now the camera cameras never overheated on us, but just something to be aware about. And finally, battery life. Yeah, this thing juices out very quickly. On par with the Sony RX1R Mark II, but the latter is a full frame sensor camera. I'd be out shooting with this with a freshly charged battery, and the next thing I know, I lost the bar. Not a deal breaker, I don't mind it for the size. I'm happy to carry a few extra battery. They're small enough anyway, and this thing charges via USB-C, so thank God for that. So far, I'm very happy with this purchase. Maybe it's the honeymoon phase talking, but yeah, let me know. If you want to see a follow-up video on my adventures with the Ricoh GR3, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoy what I do and you want to support the channel, consider helping out via a super thanks or simply stick around and listen to what my sponsor Squarespace has to say. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. You don't need any coding knowledge whatsoever. 
simply just choose from their many easy to use templates. Perfect for people like us who want to focus on our travels and make YouTube videos for you guys, but still want a presentable website for brands that are looking to work with us. Whether you're building your own photography portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a landing page for your business, design it with Squarespace. Get a 14 day trial with my link below and try it for yourself. When you're ready to launch, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with my code, Jason Vaughn. Thanks for listening and supporting the channel, and we'll catch you guys in our next Japan adventure. Peace. Let's go. Well, hello there, hybrid shooters. You know, on this channel, we do a lot of camera related reviews, right? Producing countless photo and video tutorials on top of that. And to get these amazing and unique samples, you know we do a lot of traveling. Lots of traveling. But what you don't know is the pain and suffering that goes on during those travels. Well, that is about to change. So join us as we battle against the crowds, the clouds, and the cows in our brand new photography mini series, Travel Gone Vong. Travel Gone Vong. Oh, no. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. <laughs>